So when we're determining a treatment approach, there's a number of variables. So, you know, to some degree based on a patient's individual characteristics, their age, their um, other health issues may guide what treatments are available or indicated or even desirable from a patient standpoint. Um, to some degree, the locations and extent of disease are important. Um, so if someone has cancer and that's causing a particular symptom, you know, with bony sites being a particular example, um, there may be a role for something targeted, something like radiation and in rare cases, surgery to sort of target a specific symptomatic or worrisome spot of metastatic cancer. Um, in general, the mainstay of treatment for metastatic breast cancer is what we call systemic treatment or medical treatment. Um, treatment that's gonna go everywhere and treat the cancer wherever it is. Um, in some situations, we may be deciding between more or less aggressive treatment um, and the locations and sites of disease may be important in determining that if someone has um, extensive disease, for instance, in a vital organ like the lung, the liver, the brain, we may start with something more versus less aggressive to try to get it under control more quickly, whereas people with more limited metastatic disease may be able to start with something less aggressive. Um, and then beyond that, you know, a lot of the decision making is, is based on those molecular markers um, that I alluded to, which are defined by the hormone receptor status, so whether the tumor expresses those estrogen and progesterone receptors, and whether the tumor overexpresses HER2, and then to a lesser degree based on um, other markers that may be defined by additional tests. Every treatment discussion we have is sort of a two-way street. So, you know, our job is to present the data, present options, present recommendations, and often we have, you know, an opinion on where we would fall and if there are a number of different options. Um, but to me, it's a collaborative discussion. Um, and if there are options, it's weighing, you know, what potential benefit do we get from a single option or from adding something to that particular option versus what are the downsides? You know, and some of it is discussion about, you know, logistics. Do we do something IV versus oral? You know, is there a particular side effect that we're hoping um, to avoid, you know, such as hair loss, which of course we're trying to avoid, but some treatments, you know, may have a higher likelihood of working, but a higher likelihood of causing hair loss that may factor into our decision. So, you know, whether it's the first decision point when we're deciding on preliminary therapy or future decision points as we go through this journey, um, there is always a discussion about, you know, this is where we are, these are what our options are, you know, here's, you know, how we're going to weigh the pros and cons. And then, you know, it comes back to a collaborative decision about how we weigh the risks and rewards and, you know, where we're, where we're going with an individual patient. Clinical trials are always part of at least the conversation. So they're always a consideration at each step of our discussion. So from a preliminary treatment standpoint, we're always going to go through, you know, here are our standard options. You know, here's again what we think is most appropriate. Um, and if there's a clinical trial that's appropriate in that scenario, we'll lay that out there as an option. Um, so a clinical trial, it's always worth discussing. It's always worth asking that your doctor is a clinical trial appropriate for me at this point. Um, but it's not always the right recommendation. Um, so there's a lot of scenarios, especially at the beginning of treatment for metastatic disease, where we have so many options and so many new and novel treatment options and drugs that have been approved fairly recently that have sort of defined the standard of care and um, that the standard is going to be often what we recommend and a clinical trial may be something that we would use if that treatment fails to work or at some future point down the line. Um, and at other points in time, we have very good appropriate clinical trials that could be um, indicated at any step along the way. So it's worth the discussion, whether it's the recommendation or not, you know, depends on the circumstances, it depends on the time. You know, what we have today was, you know, very different than what we might have had um, available six months ago and six months from now. 
Um, but um, clinical trials are out there and you know if if the location that a patient is going doesn't have access to clinical trials it's always reasonable to ask too should i be going somewhere else to see if a clinical trial is appropriate mm -hmm.